In this video, I will be discussing how developmental networks can shape appearances and traits. In a land far, far away where dragons roamed freely, one curious genetic student wanted to know why some of the dragons had spikes and others didn't, even though they all shared the same genome sequence. In all of these dragons, a particular pathway is followed that prompts the de development of skin cells, but in some dragons, this will lead to the development of spikes, and in others, no spikes are developed. To figure this out, the dragons tested different scenarios within the pathway that would cause spikes or not. They first had to determine if the wild type, which is a version with no mutations, would lead to the development of spikes. In the wild type version, S promotes P, which then inhibits I. Without the presence of I to inhibit K, then K is able to promote E, which then promotes the development of spikes. The dragons then began testing various hypothetical situations following the pathway. They created a mutation leading to the exclusion of P. Without the presence of P, there is nothing inhibiting I, leading to the inhibition of K. And if K is inhibited, then it will be unable to promote E and spikes will ultimately not be formed. The next mutation tested was surrounding I. The pathway would begin as normal with S promoting P, but with the mutation of I, P is unable to perform its normal inhibition and K will also not be inhibited. So it will promote E and lead to the development of spikes in the dragons. The dragons then tested hypothetical situations where double mutations would occur. They started off examining mutations of I and E. S would promote P, which would then be unable to inhibit I because of the mutation similar to the past hypothetical situation, so K would not be inhibited and could promote E. However, the mutation of E causes it to not be promoted, so spikes are not developed. The final hypothetical situation they tested was a mutation in S and K. The mutation of S causes P to not be promoted, therefore causing I to not be inhibited and will be able to actively inhibit K. But with a mutation occurring at K, E will not be promoted and spikes will not be developed. After learning all this information on how mutations can cause the development of spikes, they started wondering when a dragon that is able to develop spikes would or wouldn't actually develop them. Depending on the spike's location could impact whether or not the spikes develop. For example, in this image, the dragon has spikes on its paws, which create a lot of difficulty in moving around. So, in locations where spikes can create difficulty or are undesirable, there are likely mutations in those particular skin cells inhibiting the development of spikes, whereas in locations such as the back of the dragon, these mutations will not occur as they have no undesirable effect on them. And these are my references.